Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Learning Free CAD for Beginners where we teach the fundamentals of Free CAD with practical examples whilst following and understanding workflows. In this tutorial we're carrying on from last week where we looked at revolves and sweeps and this time we're going to be looking at the part versus the part design. We're going to be focusing heavily on the part workbench and understanding how the part workbench and its revolve tool in there differs from the part design and we'll learn the flexibility of the part revolve using the vertex, edge, face, open sketch and close sketch. By the end of this tutorial we'll be demonstrating each of those and you'll have an understanding of where we can use those in our projects. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this workflow. If you like what you're seeing please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So I'm in the part design and we're just going to talk about the previous video. What we learned is that with revolves we can create a body and create a sketch in the part design. I'm going to go along the XZ plane. And we learn from a profile. I'm just going to use the polyline. We can revolve an object and we'll just create a very simple profile like so and connect them up. We're going to redundant constraint because we need this vertical constraint deleted. So I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. So we've got a simple profile there and we learned we can use the revolve to revolve that and we can revolve it 360, whatever degrees we want. So just set that to 360. Going back to the sketch, we also learned about this axis, which we're revolving around. So for this one, we're revolving around the vertical axis. And if I remove the online constraint here, the object constraint, and move this off, and the same with this one, actually we can leave this one on, doesn't matter. We learned that if we leave some gap in here, that creates a hole all the way through. And also if we cross the line that we're revolving around, then it goes into error. So you can see the red exclamation mark there for error. We also learned about filleting. So if we wanted to say curve off the top, we don't need to use a fillet or chamfer. We can just delete the top part, bring this up slightly and add an arc. So I'm going to use the end point and rim point arc in here just to add a small curvature on that surface and hit close. Therefore we get a curved surface. We can use that line to add such things as a profile across there to sweep across there. If we wanted to use a sweep to have more detail to this known in the part design as an additive pipe. And for that we can pick Kind of surface or the base planes and create a sketch and find that seam so that seams runs along here and we can add if there's something along this seam let's add our slot along there make sure we don't go into redundant constraints so this is the profile that we're going to place along this seam and i hit close that profile can be swept across there. I may want another profile at the other end to allow for it to be finished correctly. So that profile can be swept using the additive pipe. And we got the sketch in there, we've already selected and we add an edge, this one here. And we can add this one if we want to bring this around. So add an edge to this one, like so. Another profile at the end will smooth that out. I'm just gonna remove that edge and hit OK. So you can see we've got an edge that's been used as a sweep path. I'm going to show you how to do this in the part as well. We can actually do this in the part. I'll come on over to the part and we'll remove this additive pipe and the revolve. So we've got the two sketches, the profile and the revolve. And in the part, I'm not going to get rid of the body. I'm just going to leave the body there. It doesn't mean it's a part design object. The body is just a container to contain these in. If I delete this body, then I have to move the sketches out. 
but we'll just leave that there for the time being while in the part workbench. We can do exactly the same in here. So we can take this sketch and revolve it along the z-axis. So we've got the z-axis there. Yeah, okay. And use the sweep for this profile using the sweep. And we need to pick the sketch that we're going to use. So I want to use this sketch and click on it, make it go green, move it over. Sweep path, we've got to select the path. So I want to select this one. Hit done. If I had other profiles in here, I'll just add them in as well, just move them across and hit OK. Making sure that sweep, we've got the option to make that solid. So that's true. So why should we use the part design over the part for doing basically exactly the same thing? We've done exactly the same thing there and create the same object. We look in here, the only difference is that they're different objects, they're not one. And we can solve that by control clicking both of them and using a boolean to union those together. So let's use a union. So those are together now. But what does the part give us over the part design? Well, one thing in the part that you can do, that's get rid of this sweep. So I'm just going to delete the fusion, delete the sweep and come into the revolve. Have a look at this sketch. If I deleted this, say this top line going around here, hit delete, hit close. You can see we've gone into error. But if I click on the revolve and come down to the solid, which is currently set to true, set that to false, then we've created a shell. So we've got an open sketch. We can't do this in a part design. It will complain that the sketch is open. This allows us to do more advanced modeling and more advanced surfacing. So I could create another revolve in here or another sweep, etc., and surface against those using the surface workbench. So we're starting to look at this workbench and use it in a more organic way. So what we've done is used behind that revolve, we've used a sketch or an edge to allow us to revolve around that. So we've got more flexibility as well as that. We could use, say, a vertex as well. So I'm just going to delete all these. I'm going to delete the body as well and create a new sketch over in the sketcher on the XY plane. If I created a number of vertices in here using the point, create points, then I can create a number of points like so, just quickly. So these four points here, if I hit close, you can't see those points at the moment, so we've got to convert them to something known as construction geometry. So we come back in, double click that, and we'll highlight with a box selection by clicking and dragging. So we've selected all those. Come up to the toolbar, click on toggle construction geometry, or come up to sketch, sketch geometries, toggle construction geometry. These go white. That means when I hit close, we'll see them in our scene so we can see them there so let's click on top so you can see them all there so those are sitting in our scene ready to be used so they're there let's move these out just a bit more what this allows me to do is basically take this sketch which was created on the top, so the XY plane. Close, and that's fine. The top. Let's come around to the top. I should have used my controls up here and position that onto the screen. Zoom out. And let's bring this around. So we've got those there. We can use that sketch in the part. These are vertexes, and use a revolve. And we're looking to revolve around the Y axis, so the Y axis there, and hit OK. We've created a number of profiles in there. So we've just revolved a vertex or vertices into edges. Trouble is with this revolve, we can't do anything with this at the moment. We need to break it apart. If it has a number of edges like this, then it's known as something called a compound object. It's a collection of edges. The part workbench 
has compound tools. If we look at the explode compound and click on that, what happens? We get exploded revolve. In there, we have each of the edges that have been extracted out. Inside that edge, you can see the original revolve here. So this is the original revolve, and we can reuse that if we want. So the parts workbench uses a nested structure, and we can get back to the items within. So this is what this revolve has been made with, and all these revolves, you'll find that we have the same object in here. So if I click and show one, they all show. So they're all related to the same object. What we can do with these is come into say the loft. So we haven't been through lofting yet. Lofting comes from boat making where you loft for a number of profiles to make the finished article, which in that case would be a boat. In this case, we're gonna be using these edges as profiles. And we just click on the first one. These have got to be in order. So it's revolve zero. So let's double click that, double click the next one. You can see they're highlighting in order as we move down and I'll click the next one. And I can create this as a solid if I so wish. If I don't, it'll just create it as a shell. Let's hit OK. And we've got our finished article. If I wanted this to a point, then let's delete that loft and we've got to add a point in here. Let's go back to the original Revolve. So I'm just gonna delete this one. So we don't want to delete its contents as well. So we just hit no, the Revolve comes back and we'll look at that sketch. Now, if I added another vertex, say on this line, because I want to loft this to a point, hit escape and click on that, and made that construction geometry. So come up to this toggle construction mode, hit close, then that's not been added to this. And if I try to revolve that, so I've just deleted the revolve, hit delete on the keyboard, using the revolve and using the axis that's built around which is the y-axis hit ok it goes into error so i need to take this one here just going to delete that hit close that's allowed that now i've got to create a new sketch or create a vertex somehow we could use the draft workbench for instance. Great new sketch along the same plane, which was the YZ plane there. So YZ, okay. And we'll create another vertex, say about here. Make sure we click on it and create that as construction. Hit close. We've got this vertex here. Now we can loft through those profiles. I'm gonna take that revolve again come over to the part and use the compound tools. So part, compound, and the slow compound to get the individual rings there. And now we use the loft or part. Come down to these operations here and I want loft. Select like the first one, which is gonna be our point. It's point here, double click that. Next one. So these have to be in order. Double click, or we could use the right arrow keys there. You can leave it as a shell this time. So I'm not gonna click create solid. Just to show you really, if I hit okay, you can see what's happened there. The vertex is a bit far away. But if I click on the loft, change this match degrees, and reduce that. I get more of a less restrictive flow to that vertex. So you can see we haven't got crossovers there. And that's that max degrees there, maximum degrees. Let's move that vertex down. So I'm gonna come into that loft. We can see all of the revolves in here. So if I click on one, press the space bar, this one will disappear as well. And click on this one. You can see they are linked. Let's take that sketch and bring this down to about here and close it. So we've created this bell shape here. This comes in real handy if we quickly want to sketch something that's symmetrical. So let's delete all those. 
and I'm going to go over to the image workbench. I'm going to import an image, which is in my downloads. I'm going to use the bowling pin image here and open that. Put it on the XY plane. So you can see that I've got this image here of a bowling pin. Now, if I come over to the sketcher, and what we would normally do would evolve, say, in the part design, we would create a sketch along the XY plane and come in and start sketching this with the B spline or a number of arcs in here. So I'm going to use a B spline, connect up to that line, and I'm going to try it be as quick as possible. And see with B spline, well, first of all, we get straight lines like so if I hit escape then we get the B spline lines here and we're not too bad but we have to position these in the right position so we have to do some tweaking afterwards to get all these correct and into position we may have to add new points but we need to Basically, take the B spline and massage it into place. And you know, sometimes it can take take a while to do this. If I just wanted something like this, and once I'm happy, I hit close, and then come over to the part. I haven't closed the sketch, so you're looking at more flexibility of the part when revolving because it doesn't need a closed sketch. And we'll just rotate this around the Y direction and hit OK. So we've got our bowling pin. Let's try this with vertexes. So I'm just going to delete that revolve and come into the sketch. And this time, let's remove everything in here. And we've got our image. Click on the vertex and we'll start adding the vertexes. So remember that we don't add a vertex to this line here. We have to keep away from it. And if we want it to a point, then we add that as a second piece of geometry. So you can see the top is flat and I can just add these in, in different key positions. So I'm gonna go here and come into here. And we'll just move this around until we're finished. And didn't really need that one, but we'll put one in there and hit close. Well, let's not hit close. Let's make sure that we've highlighted them all. Now I don't want this middle one, so I'm just going to click that one, get rid of it, and change those to construction. Hit close, now we've got those points. We can revolve those around the Y axis. Hit OK. We've now got our revolves. Now take that revolve from the part. We need to break those up into individual edges. So come into the compound and explode compound. We now got our exploded revolution we can now use the loft or part come down to loft and then place all of these into this column i'm going to double click them and just double click on top all those in create solid and hit ok and we've created our bowling pin quite quickly much quicker than what would happen if we was to trace it we can hide all of these revolves by clicking on the actual folder and pressing the space bar and that just hides them all there. And we've got our bowling pin. So for such things as rapid prototyping, this comes in quite handy. But we've also got the concepts of an edge and a face that we can actually rotate as well. So for our next demonstration, we're going to revolve an edge. I'm already in the sketcher. I'm going to create a sketch along the XY plane. So I've got the sketch here and we'll create something like a track. And the idea is to follow this track with a revolve. So we have a circular object that can roll up the track and fit into the cross section of the track. So we'll use a basic rectangle and we'll add some circles. Let's add a circle here, one here, and something a bit bigger here like that. 
we use the trim to trim the tops of the circles away and we'll work back and trim the inside so we get these arc sections here. Normally I would fully constrain this but it's only a demonstration. Let's hit close. So we've got this and we need to extrude it over in the part workbench. So we take the sketch, make sure it's selected, click extrude. We're going to go along the normal. So remember when we create a sketch, the normal is away from the sketch. So it runs this, this way here. So normal sketch is this way, going this way. And we'll set this to something like 150 millimeters. So now I've got this, well, what do I want to do with it? I want to create a revolve that actually fits in here. So first I need an axis to revolve around. Can't revolve around this axis because we'll just get three spheres. So I'm gonna come up a little and revolve around somewhere around about here. For that, I need a reference. So I'm gonna sketch a reference on this face. Select this face. Come over to the sketcher. That face is selected and we'll create a new sketch. It's going to map that to the face and we want it as flat face, which is correct. So that's added sketch there, flat face. It's flipped us around on the other side. So you can see that there, but that's fine. I just want a straight line that lays like that. So this is going to be where I'm going to revolve around. I can set some distance away from here, like so, let's say 15 millimeters. And this would be the diameter of the object that sits in here. So now we've got that, we need to extract this edge. We're going to revolve this edge around this axis to make that shape. For that, we need to extract it. And there are a number of ways of doing that. One way is to use an external workbench called this curves workbench. That allows us to extract edges and connect them together. Or we can utilize something in the part design called the sub shape binder or the shape binder and take these edges. For that, I need to select these edges. So I'm mixing the part design and the part together now, but this doesn't need a body, it's just a tool on here that can be utilized outside the part design. I'm gonna select this edge and control select all the others. So that edge is selected now. Let's come out to the part design and create a sub object shape binder. Look over to the model, we can see a binder has been created there. And if I click, on the extrude and press the space bar, we can see that edge has been removed from that object. Well, not removed, it's been created from that object. I can now take that binder and use it in the revolve. So let's come back over to the part and use the revolve. So that binder is sitting there. This is what we're going to revolve. Select a reference and select this line here and hit OK. Though we've created the binder shape, this is actually a shell. So this can be used as a shell. It can also be used as solid. We just need to close off the ends. If I bring back the extrude, we can see how it sits in this object. So this will roll in those grooves there. Show you how we would close this up. All we need to do is come over to the part which we're already in and there's some tools in here and you see how the part can be used as a Swiss Army knife to allow you to prototype objects quite quickly. So we've got the shape builder here, I click on that and we've got a number of shapes that we can create. So we've got faces from vertices, faces from edges, I'm not going to use the face from edges to close this up. So click faces from edges and we'll select this edge, create, come around to the other side Select this edge and create, hit close. Now I've got two faces and our revolve. And we just take the revolve, control click the face and the second face, come up to part, come down to compound. 
make a compound of those. So that's one compound with all those three objects in. And then we can come up to part and convert that to a solid. Let's hide the original compound by pressing the spacebar. We've now got a solid object. So this is the kind of thing that you'll do basically last to finish this off. And if I add, say, a sphere in here and give this some radius, so we can actually see it, hit Control R, so I'll bring this up in size and I can see it's slowly appearing. And right click, transform. Then if I place it on top, I can see that this is a solid. If I click on the one I want to keep, Control click on the sphere, the one I want to remove, and using the cut, and you see that's cut into that. So we used a shape binder from the part design over in the part to allow us to create an edge. Use that edge in a revolve, add faces to the ends just to cap the top and the bottom, convert that to a solid, and then taking a chunk out of the solid just to show that it is a solid. So you can begin to see how the part is more organic in the way we're modeling. Whereas the part design restricts you down a certain workflow, allowing you to use sketches and traditional CAD processes. Let's take this one step forward and look at a face for Evolve. So we looked at a vertex, we looked at vertices, we've looked at an edge. Let's look at a face. So create a sketch along the XY plane and I create a pipe in here. So we're gonna be using the slot to create some kind of piping. We're over constrained, so we click the redundant constraint and hit delete. And now I can pull this in and also place it along this edge. A point on line constraint there. So basically we've got this shape as it close. I'm gonna extrude that over in the part. and give it some extrusion, something like 15 millimeters. So we've got this ring here. I can add some detail in here. So that's add, let's say a sketch along this one. So let's come over to the sketcher. Great sketch, that's gonna go flat face on there. And remembering we're in the part workbench, so we're dealing with booleans, cut fusions, etc. And that's import some geometry. So let's import these edges as reference. Got those edges there. And we'll create some detail. So I may want to place a circle here. And we'll also create a rectangle along there. Let's bring this out. We're going to cut this. Let's take that constraint off. So I've got a point on line constraint there. So let's delete that or point on object constraint. Let's bring that up, so something like that. Let's hit close. Come over to the part and we'll extrude that. And I'm going to extrude it by something like seven millimeters. And let's send that in the other direction. So seven millimeters forwards, let's go minus seven. So it's gone backwards. It's minus seven there. Take that extrusion. Select the one we want to keep, which is the very first extrusion. And control select the other extrusion. And we'll come out to the part, boolean and cut. So we've added some detail in there. And see how that's cut into this face. So we've got this single face here with that cut in there. Now I want to take this face and rotate it. So I'm going to create a rotation that goes this way. I'm going to rotate it over a reference point. So I'm going to keep this detail in here and have it along the rotation. So to do that, I'm going to utilize either the part design subshape binder. So I'm going to click on that and create a subshape binder. That allows me to do that. Or press the space bar just to hide that. 
over in the draft workbench, we've got something else called a face binder. I can click that face, and it's this icon here, face binder, and I can come up to the draft in and face binder. And that creates a face binder there. You can see it just sitting on top of there. Let's hide that cut. And it's just distracted out that face. Press the space bar to bring back the upper object. So we have that there, and we can rotate that face coming over to the part and using the rotate and it's going to rotate the whole face so I want some kind of rotation around this edge here so let's try that so we've got the face binder let's rotate select reference and this edge so we've selected the cut edge so this selected not the face binder it's selected the cut edge so this edge here and let's rotate this around about 60 degrees and hit OK. It's gone the other way, but we can resolve that by coming to the revolve and using a minus 60. Send it the other direction. There we go. And it's kept the detail in on top. So we've got that detail in all the way into this part here which allows us to place clips or some kind of connection point in here. So the main one is the same as the part design where we rotate an actual closed wire. So let's come over to the part which we're already in and get rid of all these. So control A those and delete them. Let's create a sketch. Again, we can go along the top along the XY plane, XY plane for new sketch. And remembering that if we add a rectangle, hit close, and use the revolve over in the part, then that revolve, we're looking along the Y. Hit OK. We'll revolve around there, like so. We could come into that sketch and move this beyond, which will cause an error. So you can see that's gone into error there. So let's delete that revolve, leave the sketch there so it's still going to error and use the revolve. This time select reference and we'll select the edge of that sketch and hit OK. So we're revolving around that edge so we can get away from the problems with being in a certain position that's away from the axis just by using a reference in the sketch. We could come into that sketch and add another part of the sketch so here like so let's close that revolves caused an issue so we'll delete that revolve and revolve that again and this time we're going to select the reference as in this edge and hit ok it's not gone into error anymore and we've revolved around that edge of that sketch so this one here just by moving that closer, we close that hole. So that allows us to set some distance in here. So we can be exact in that hole diameter, say 10 millimeters, and hit close. So you can see that there. So over the last couple of videos, we've been looking at revolves and sweeps, and now we're gonna be doing a bit of project work. We've been learning how to create this box and also this oval box and understanding how the workflows differ between both of these. Because obviously we can't use a revolve for the overbox, so what do we use? We're gonna be using the part design and we're gonna be introducing shape binders and multi-body modeling. So I hope you're enjoying this series and I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content, and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.